Yes, you! If you like what you see, please hit the like, subscribe, share button, click the bell to all notifications on. If you want to know every single time I upload, I play video games, I do funny videos, I am an absolute crazy ranting crazy person. Please share to Twitter, Facebook, blogger, I still don't know what the crap blogger is. And enjoy the video. Do we have too much Star Trek? The answer is abso. Effing Luli? I guess I'm censoring myself or something again. Yes, we have too much. We are saturated, overly saturated. We are dripping with the goo of saturation that is Star Trek. Why am I dripping with goo? Hello everyone, I am still Becca Random 42 Still the one, still the only, still the original, still your favorite YouTube consumer advocate, Harpy. This is the quickies, isn't it? Is this, is this the quickies? It's time once again for the quickies. From Star Trek, to superheroes, SJW meltdowns, entertainment, cancel culture fails, and more. Yeah, I think we gotta do a quickies on this because, well, there's not a whole lot to say to this other than, yeah, yeah, I think, I think you're right. Zachary Quinto says the market might be too saturated for a new Star Trek movie. You're right, you're right. We have too much Star Trek. We have too much bad Star Trek right now, specifically with all of the Kurtzman, Abrams, all of those new modern day stuff. Yes, yes, we have too many bad Star Trek things, Mr. Zachary Quinto. He says that everyone involved in Star Trek is eager for a fourth installment to the blockbuster franchise that really don't do much, much more than break even. But he believes the market might be, might be too saturated for it. Yes. Yes. And no, nobody wants a fourth movie. Nobody cares about Star Trek anymore. Everybody's moved on. They've already told half of their fan base to bugger off. Did you see? Did you see what Jason Isaacs said? He already told half of his fan base to bugger off time and time again. See? This stuff. This stuff. You're, you're already... Telling half of your fan base to bugger off because, you know, it's a stop. Just stop. Shut up. Nobody is any better or cares more than anybody else. We're tired of this. We're tired of the holier than thou attitude on this crap. Nobody cares more than any other person. And anybody who does so to, on social media is just trying to be more virtuous than everybody else and basically tell us all that, that their shit doesn't stink. That's what you're telling me. Grow up, Jason Isaacs. Nobody cares what you have to say. He then told The Talk that the market might be a bit too saturated for a new Star Trek film. So I'm not sure what the plans are for a feature film version of the franchise, but we're all here if they want to beam us up. Except for Chris, Chris Pine, right? And Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth was the one who was really, really holding out because he's worth more money. Wasn't he? Wasn't he? Now he was coming back in as Chris Pine's dad. Chris Pine was trying to be a giant star right now with all the Wonder Woman drama going around. And yet you got, well, he's doing pretty well for himself right now over on the boys. Is he on the boys? He's doing pretty well for himself here, Carl Urban. So yeah, yeah, I don't think anybody who's really needing to come back except Quinto and my voice is going, I apologize. Now normally, normally this would be its own video. The backlash against Less of It's Two against Abby's muscular arms has been quieted down, but Neil Tuckman is still annoyed at how some how angry fans got where. He got annoyed at us. Okay. We're not angry. We're just saying you're, you're kind of asking a lot of us to suspend our disbelief. You're kind of asking a lot of us to assume that a female is going to, in a, you know, post-apocalyptic setting, going to be able to work out to bulk up that much. Because you know what happens when you're in kind of a harsh environment? You start slimming down. And you start losing a lot of muscle mass because you're, you're having a hard time finding enough protein to keep up with that. And not only that, to get that workout schedule, to get those arms, you would have to work out quite a lot. And we already saw that based on her workout schedule in the game, she only works out like Thursdays and Tuesdays or something. So she would not even be able to get a physique like that. What was Neil Druckmann having to say about us? The outrage from some corners of The Last of Us 2 fandom has died down significantly since the game released this year. That's because everybody moved on. Again, you told your fan base to bugger off, and they did. Or it's become less vocal. Still, fans won't forget the 
homophobic kind of, well, how are they homophobic when she's supposed to be heterosexual, a heterosexual woman, right? And that was another thing they did. They queer baited us. They did. They said, oh, well, we're getting all this representation. And, and no, she is not homosexual. She is not queer in any way. She is 100% straight, not transgendered even. So you can shove this right up your patootie about Ellen and a certain character death that led to the last of us to review bombing on Medicare. Was it, is it review bombing or is it review bombing when you hire a bunch of marketing accounts to go in and give a false positive? Is that review bombing too? So you know what? If you're going to accuse somebody, stop doing it yourself, right? Because that's what they do. Every time they accuse, they're always busted doing it themselves. The Last of Us fans celebrated The Last of Us Day, formerly known as Outbreak Day, before being changed due to the global, you know what, Naughty Dog released a free PS4 theme, figurines of Joel and Ellie, and a cosplay guide and more. Neil Druckmann took to Twitter the day after The Last of Us Day to voice his thoughts about certain Last of Us 2 critics. When? They always do this, though. Like, really, they always do this. Twitter user posted an open question in, in the tweet. Oh, I saw this tweet. The female characters can be muscular. Oh, he responds. Ugh, and here we go. Learn what anatomy looks like. Learn about proper proportions. If you're trying to give me a realistic and non-transgendered character, thank you very much. All right? You queer baited us. Move the crap on. Because I am. <laughs> I'm not doing a very good job of snapping these in for everybody. Look what we have. Kelly Marie Tran is back, and she's reflecting on quitting social media after the Dust Jedi backlash. Still going with this narrative, even though I have found the original Twitter user and marketing account. It is a specialist designed in social media marketing. I'll link that video up here. Where they did find the guy who went with the false narrative that she left social media due to people saying bad things to her. Blockhead, traitor, snake, cookie. It's been nearly three years since Star Wars The Last Jedi hit theaters and became one of the most divisive movies of the franchise. Unfortunately, some people who disliked the film took their hatred too far with no evidence. You give no evidence of this. The nasty, ist behavior. This, this didn't happen, though. This didn't happen. I have done countless, countless videos on this where I could not find one single thing that anybody said bad about her to her Instagram, to her social media, anywhere. But I found the marketing account that started it all. And I found the rumor site that ran with it. And if you trace it back far enough, it was all a rumor that these people ran with with no evidence. They give no screenshots, they give no proof, they give nothing, and even her op-ed from the New York Times calls out Hollywood, not anybody else. And Kelly Marie Tran, here's what she says. I mean, I think that, you know, it's a different decision for everyone. Oh, I hate it when they quote people specifically, because then I gotta kind of figure out their speech patterns. Kelly Marie Tran explained, and I think that people should do what they think is right for them. I also think that was the best thing I ever did. I don't know. It's funny. I feel like people are still shocked by it sometimes. I'm like, no, I did what was best for me. And there's nothing wrong with that. Use it or don't. And earlier this year, she opened up about her role being cut down in The Rise of Skywalker. She claimed to be satisfied with the experience. I mean, I'm really just amazed at how J.J. Abrams was able to sort of wrap up all these incredible stories. There were so many characters, and at the end of the day, I got to be part of something much bigger than me, so that's so special. Yeah, she got cut out of it, didn't she? Pretty much. So they're still just running with this Kelly Marie Tran stuff. Up next, Life on Mars? It's just Ed Asner's face. Not really alive, nor can I even see it. According to CNET, the Mars orbiter finds a grinning face of Ed Asner in an impact crater. I don't see it. I, I don't. I really don't. I'm sorry. I can't see it. I'm a big fan of pareidolia, the human tendency to spot familiar objects in random shapes. That's like when you see, you know, a dragon in a cloud or something. Or you, know, you see the, the face and the grain of wood on the door. Those sort of things. I never see it, though. I rarely, rarely, rarely ever see what I'm supposed to be seeing. Mars is a wonderland for pareidolia, giving us gifts from a pebble that resembles a robot leg to alien-looking faces spotted in rock formations. Let's add a portion of Ed Asner to the list. 
Do you guys want me to talk more about that stuff where we see like the cool shapes and stuff? Because I love that stuff. I talk about that stuff over with Creepy Little Book all the time. Subscribe to his channel if you want all this type of stuff. The alien stuff, Atlantis, all the cool Bigfoot. Subscribe to his channel for that one for sure. I don't see it, but I kind of see something a little more giggity than that somewhere. I know, it's like the 3D hologram things from the 90s. You can't see it. You can't see it. Here, let's look at the tweet. Well, that's an unexpected interruption. I don't see it. <laughs> I don't see it. If we look really, really hard, do we see it? <laughs> I don't see the Ed Asner face. But if you guys see it, tell me in the comment section also. Please like the video if you liked it. If you didn't like it, keep your comments to yourself. Brie bombing all the time. Oh yeah, all the time. It's time for the Sharon of the Week. Well, it's an old segment, but I didn't have a little blurb for it. We have our Karens of the Week. And who's our Karen of the Week? Well, it's a lot of Karens. We have not one, not two, not three Karens, but we have a mega Karen mashup compilation. Oh, yes. All of them. Should we go a little larger? We'll go a little larger. <laughs> it is not one Karen. It is not two Karens. It is not three Karens. It is four. Four Karens. One of them might be a monkey. Monkey! Who did that? Let's take a look. Karens with nothing to say. They're all Karens. They're all wonderful. The monkey. I love the monkey. Why is the monkey the best one? <laughs> it's all of them. It's all of our Karens of the week. I saw this and I had to get any chance and excuse I could to squeeze at the monkey. <laughs> that fuzzy thing sounds like me. I had to squeeze the monkey. It is so cute. <sighs> And that is our quickie segment this week. I cannot work like this. I have no idea what that has to do with anything. I am going back to my live chat. Send me Karens. Send me weird quick things. Send me fun stories like this. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye. You're just going to sit there and talk about it, aren't you? You calling me chicken?